The menopause word means the final period. And the reason that we have a final period, that period stopped, is because to have normal period pattern, our ovaries develop eggs each month, egg cell develops, is released, and may be fertilized if there's chance of pregnancy. But along with that, the ovaries produce two really important hormones, estrogen and progesterone. And these hormones cause the lining of the womb to be stimulated and then shared in the absence of pregnancy. So, as our ovaries run out of egg cells, they're less able to produce these hormones, the lining of the womb stays thin, and the periods stop. And so menopause is actually the final period, which is a sign that our ovaries have stopped working. The average age of the menopause, the final period, is 51. We know that about 1% of women become menopausal under the age of 40 and about 0.1% under the age of 30. Leading up to the final period, there often is a transition phase called the perimenopause. And at this time, the ovaries just start going a bit wonky. So we can have fluctuating function of the ovaries. We might have a few months when periods go a bit wonky, start to spread out. We might start to have symptoms of being low in estrogen, and then it can resolve again. It's very unusual to have completely normal periods, and then they stop at 51. And 51 is the average. For some people, it can also be later on. But it's important for women to know in their 40s even to look out for changes because sometimes these changes do creep up on us and people often don't have that understanding about the hormonal background to it. In women over the age of 45, we diagnose menopause by a history, by, un by asking about the period pattern and if they are having any symptoms of suggested of becoming low in estrogen. In younger women, we would often do blood tests, not only to confirm the diagnosis, but also to look for any correctable causes. But in the women aged 45 and plus, there is absolutely no need for blood tests. Blood tests measure hormone levels which go up and down like a yo-yo. So the level taken is only telling us what level it is at the second the blood is taken. It bears no correlation to whether or not the woman's having symptoms and whether or not she requires treatment. The menopause reflects that we become low in estrogen, and so the symptoms of the estrogen are incredibly varied. There are estrogen receptors throughout the body, and how each woman responds to the lack of estrogen varies enormously, both in whether or not she's have, having symptoms, what type of symptoms, how long they go on for, how severe they are, and most importantly, what is the impact on her life. So early on in this phase of becoming low in estrogen, the classic symptoms which about 80% of women will experience are flushes and sweats, but there's huge variation in the severity and the impact. Other symptoms might be joint aches, mood changes, disturbed sleep, anxiety, irritability, low mood, um, a whole range of symptoms that, as I said, affect us very differently. Importantly also to notice are these are the symptoms that start early in this transition from producing plenty of estrogen to not producing estrogen. And then there's an intermediate range of symptoms, which often classically happen a few years after the periods have stopped. So a few years after being low in estrogen. And these are symptoms affecting the vagina and the bladder. So women may notice vaginal dryness, discomfort, irritation. It can be sore during sex. And that can have a lot of knock-on effects related to relationships, self-esteem, confidence. Related to the bladder with the lack of estrogen can affect bladder function. So women may notice they're going to the toilet more often. They may have an urgency. They may have to pass urine at night. And very often these symptoms are not recognized as being hormonally related. So it's really important women know what to look out for. And then a later on consequence, not necessarily a symptom, are effects of lack of estrogen on our bone health and heart health. The early onset symptoms, such as the flushes, the sweats, etc., can often be managed by diet and lifestyle changes, first of all. And we'd really encourage women to have a think and look about what is the diet and lifestyle and are there any simple changes that can make that may not only help their early symptoms, but more importantly, may also improve their later health related to bone health and heart health. So maintaining healthy weight, increasing exercise, cutting down alcohol, caffeine, not smoking, all the stuff that we all know already is incredibly important, particularly at this stage. 
Then going on to treatments, the most effective treatment is to replace the estrogen, which makes sense. So the symptoms and the consequences are due to lack of estrogen. And if we replace estrogen in the form of hormone replacement therapy, that can be a really useful option for many women. There are also alternative therapies. So there are some alternative treatments which can some women can find helpful. It can be a bit of a minefield. There's a lot to choose from and it's important to get information and understand what may be helpful.